Hey everybody, I hope you are having a fantastic day. It's actually a week since I recorded the last video, video number 10, and I've had some time to think about it, I've had some time to get some feedback, and I'm going to make a little change that I think will make the course better for you. I am concerned about building anothermaker.com and I, I want to have that site up, but to be honest, I want you to learn WordPress with BTheme more. And so rather than getting stuck in the mud for what I want for my dream web page, I'm going to concentrate on using the idea of another maker to help show you all the different things that we can be doing with BTheme. And so instead of just trying to build my site, I want to help you build your site. And if that doesn't make sense, it will as we begin to diverge from just building another maker to exploring some of the options that we have with BTheme. And then when the course is done, I'll make another maker exactly what I need it to be. But to be honest, that site is going to be pretty simple. It's just going to be a place to share a few tutorials. And so I want to expand beyond that with you. And so as we expand, we are going to go to the dashboard and we're going to start customizing some stuff. So we're going to go to the B theme and theme options. And there is a lot of fun stuff in here. Uh, most of the stuff on this cha on this page doesn't need to be changed, except the one thing I do is I put a favicon in. And so, if you're not familiar with the fat, what a favicon is, it is a, some people say fav icon. It is this little thingy up here in the corner that identifies your site. And so, I've already uploaded the one from userspice.com, and so I'm going to take that. But if you don't have a favicon, you can just actually Google favicon generator. And this website right here, or pretty much any of the ones below, will allow you to upload a photo and get it turned into a favicon. Now, they're very small images, so you don't want super detailed pictures. But basically, it will give you um, a whole assortment of different favicons. And so, I have my little user spice one that I uploaded here, and I'm going to save. And then now, one of the things that's kind of interesting is... A lot of times this stuff gets cached and you saw it, it changed right there at the last second so you can hit shift f5 and refresh the page and it will clear out that cache if you need to um you also see that somehow i accidentally changed the logo to blue uh that was me playing around but we have our favicon and so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our logo and when we go to our logo, we're going to hit browse and you can either upload one or I've already uploaded the user spice logo. So I'm going to select that. Um, the deal with this is B theme is very responsive and can do anything from small old mobile devices to super high resolution devices. So if you want to upload different resolutions of your logo, depending on what you're doing, there's basically four options. This is your standard logo in low resolution and high resolution. If you don't upload a high resolution logo, it will just use this one. Then sticky header is another thing where, and I'll get to that in a minute, but it's a different style of menu at the top of your system. And if you want to upload a different kind of logo for that, you can do that. Um, a few options here. You don't really need them very much, but one is most people want clicking on their logo to link to the home page. Uh, I almost never use the text logo. You can also adjust the the height and padding. Padding is basically some extra spacing uh, on the top of your of your header and stuff like that. But we're not going to worry too much about that. It's just good to know that they're there. So I'm going to save this, and then I'm going to refresh this page. And you may have to hit Shift F5 or Control F5, but you can see now my logo is there in place of the existing logo. So we're going to look at a few other things. I'm going to drag this out to the side so that we can kind of jump back and forth. Okay, so I've adjusted the content a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and make this full screen. Um, I've adjusted the content a little bit so you can see what happens. Now, right now, we already have this as being responsive. And you'll note that as we move down here, eventually this will drop down to where this menu drops over here to the side. And so B theme is taking care of all that for us. Now we may want this to look or feel differently. And so this is totally a matter of personal preference, but we're going to come in here to the, uh, let's see, to the header and subheader. You can kind of, there's not really much going on in these that you need right now, but you can see that there's different styles. And so this is a very blocky menu. 
this one is a little bit more free form. So if I save this and then come in here and refresh the page, you'll see that now uh, these menu items are just, just, it's just not as blocky. It looks different based on the colors. You can also do things like this. Uh, you might want your menu to just kind of float in the middle and actually sit on top. So you'll see that when I hit Shift F5. Uh, now my menu is floating on top here and you can see it kind of bounces up to the top. There isn't really a wrong uh, answer. Well, this is a wrong answer. This bottom menu is really stupid. Um, and I don't really love the sides, but that's totally up to you. But you can decide where you want your logo. If I want my logo to be static in the center like this, I can refresh the page and you'll see that now my logo is up top until I scroll and then it jumps over here. And so, and that leaves me with a thinner menu. So this is one of those things that you just play around with. You get the look and feel exactly how you want it and you can customize it. So this one, some people want for a blog, they want to keep their menu open giant on the side. Uh, again, your prerogative, you do whatever you want there, but there's tons of different options and you can quickly change the look and feel. If you have a lot of content, you may want it on the side, but you also would probably want to tweak this. And so uh, anyway, that is 100% personal preference. There's a, uh, let's see, we're going to go back to the original one just to start. And so that is there. Now, when we look at subheader, um, these things are kind of interesting depending on WordPress by default will do breadcrumbs and what breadcrumbs are is if you have multiple categories like let's just say I have projects and then Raspberry Pi and then tutorials it will allow you to click as you go deep into those projects click like sort of a little breadcrumb trail of where you've been um, I have that hidden you can also hide the page title and the subheader which I do a lot. There's just a lot of extra WordPress junk that they put up there. And so I hide that stuff a lot. You can change your background image up here. So, and we may do that in the future, but you can see that, uh, let's see, that might not, yeah, I think that's it. Anyway, you can change your big background images up there. You can change, uh, let's see here, you change your transparency, all that kind of stuff is completely, uh, up to you extras. I don't usually do much in there. Oh, so we do have this action button so we can say like if I just want to get rid of that So like let's say for instance, I want to get rid of that and I just want to I Think for now I would delete it, but uh, subscribe or something like that oh, YouTube that's what I'm gonna do Okay, so I'm gonna do YouTube and then I'm gonna say HTTPS uh, YouTube.com another maker uh, right now we're hiding the search box. There's no, we're not doing any kind of banners or anything like that. So we're going to save and now that menu button will be changed or that buy now button will be changed to my YouTube button. Uh, and that is a weird thing that that little feature is something that is specific to this theme. And so that's why it's hidden in here. Uh, the menus, this is more about the style of the menus. I don't normally change very much in here. Uh, you could put vertical lines between your menu items or something like that. You can hide sub menus and stuff. This is pretty much uh, all for tweaking. Now the action bar, not every template has an action bar, but I will do this. I will say this is the action bar. Okay, I'm going to save that. And then when we look at the page here, I don't think you're going to see anything. Uh, we're going to come over here, Shift F5. I'm probably going to be wrong. Uh, yeah, so there is no action bar by default in this. And so what that is, if you come back to header and subheader, this one, I believe, I believe that little box up there is the action bar. So if I save that and come back over here and refresh, don't make a liar out of me. Huh. Oh, you know, I might be hiding it. Let's see. I'll bet I have it hidden. So, let's see here. Aha, uh -huh. I did have it hidden. You have to say that you want to show above the header the action bar, and then we can come over here and refresh the page and you will see that the action and that's the funny thing i was here so it automatically refreshed to this page but this is the action bar 
and then you can see I could do something like uh, don't post your email in the header that's a good way to get spam so we will in fact you should never display your email address on the page or it will just get scraped and you will get tons of email now you notice that there it's trying to actually mail that out so you don't want to use that feature but anyway that is a little bit about what you can do with the uh, options i'm going to run through just a few more the sidebars i almost never play with but you might decide that you want your content to be a different width uh, and stuff like that so you can have little sidebars on, on there and, and all that i never use that feature uh, blog portfolio and shop there are some options in here for the blog like you'll see uh you can just kind of play around with and this has more to do with jumping from post to post if you want to hide the share box so people can can share it or not share it uh, all that kind of stuff you can you can play around with these uh, how you want to deal with your pagination do you want to have those featured images when i showed you we uploaded the image to the blog post do you want that to be there or do you not and there's just all kinds of little tinkering you can do in there for how you want these blog layouts to show up and we're going to do more of that going forward but i just wanted you to see where all those options are set um so i think this is a good place to stop we're going to do a little bit more uh customization in the next video and then we will start making some more content so hey hope you're enjoying the class have a great day